American, a Canadian, a Dutchman, and an Irishman walk onto a trail. It sounds like the beginning of a bad joke, but for this movie, it's anything but a joke. to be damned. I'm going to the Klondike. The Klondike is Canada. Giorgio, you be doing just fine, brother. I'm not sure why, but for quite some time now I've had this insatiable hunger for a deeper meaning. It doesn't matter if it's books, television, or movies. Regardless of the format, I naturally seem to gravitate towards stories which speak to the soul. There's no specific question I'm trying to answer or philosophy I'm trying to affirm, I'm simply drawn to the sentimental. My best guess is that I'm on a quest for anything that rings true, is down to earth, and doesn't corrupt the human condition. For those familiar with this channel, this probably comes as no surprise, and for those familiar with Emilio Estevez's 2010 drama The Way, it probably also comes as no surprise that it would be featured on this channel. The Way introduces us to a senior American optometrist named Tom, played by Martin Sheen, who learns that his son Daniel, played by his real-life son Estevez, has died in Europe. Upon retrieval of Daniel's remains, Tom has an epiphany to continue Daniel's hike through Western Europe on the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, and he intends to take Daniel with him. We're leaving in the morning. Oui? both of us. Along the way, Tom encounters a number of fellow trekkers, all from different backgrounds and all with different purposes for making the pilgrimage to St. James. Stop! Stop, it's me! Stop, it's yours from Amsterdam! But it's no mystery why I'm doing this trek. You see this cut? (laughs) My older brother is getting married in Rotterdam in December, and uh, I want to fit into my uh, old suit. You could just buy a new suit. No, but it's the third time that he's getting married. One of the guys said you're Canadian. Don't spread it around, eh? I gotta quit these. Hello, I'm Jack from Ireland. I'm Jack from Ireland. I started my pilgrimage in Paris, Joost, three months ago. And if I knew one certainty about the way of St. James, it is that no one walks this Camino by accident. No one. Everyone has their reason for walking the Camino de Santiago, but it's not exactly clear why Tom is making this trek. The obvious answer to that question is that he's merely continuing Daniel's journey, dropping handfuls of Daniel's remains along the way. But it seems like there's more to it than that. Tom and Daniel have a fractured relationship, where Tom is the hard-nosed pragmatist, and Daniel is more loose on his search for adventure. You know, most people don't have the luxury of just picking up and leaving it all behind, Daniel. Well, I'm not most people. If I don't have your blessing, that's fine. But don't judge this. Don't judge me. This is a point of contention for these two, but once Daniel is out of the picture, it seems to open the road to realization and redemption for Tom. Like the Camino, Tom's path as a character is long and his development isn't immediate. His approach to the Camino is very much in line with his goal-oriented, tunnel-vision approach to life, which feels at odds with the adventurous soul-searcher. Does this guy ever stop to smell the flowers? This isn't a race. No, it isn't. And why does it piss me off so much that I haven't seen him stop to take a break? And why does something that should be inspirational make me so... angry? Totally irrational. Same could be said for this entire journey. This is why I love Martin Sheen in this role. Although Tom is a driven realist, he's not your typical old curmudgeon portrayed by Hollywood. It would be easy to have Tom be the bitter, bereaved father of a lost son, but the way doesn't take that approach. Instead, Sheen gives us a character that's coping in silence, which allows the audience to appreciate Sheen's talent through Tom's internal struggle. Tom's not looking to telegraph the purpose of his pilgrimage, which is completely understandable. Yet he's not the aggressive, grieving isolationist we're used to seeing in this type of role. 
So what is it, on pilgrimage to change your life? Something like that. So far, less than 15% say they're doing it for health. Fewer than 5% say they're out here looking for a miracle. Miracles are in short supply these days, Jack. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to include you in my fault. I do mind. Very much so. Emilio Estevez's direction of the way is also worth mentioning. Although rudimentary with little flashy camera work, Estevez captures the French and Spanish landscapes in a way that makes glitzy cinematography irrelevant. The way showcases these vistas with such all-encompassing beauty, you cannot help but feel transported to Europe. And even though many shots are stationary or basic tracking shots, the way doesn't give off the impression that it's recycling shots. This is probably expected given the type of independent art house drama the way is. Nevertheless, the way never ceases to widen the eyes of the viewer with this love letter to, or postcard of, the region. Bonjour, Americano. Okay, that's not quite what I meant. Now look, for those who've never seen The Way, you're probably asking, why would I want to see a nearly two-hour movie about people walking a trail? I'll admit, The Way isn't for everyone, but what film is? All I can say is that the film struck a chord with me, and perhaps it did with you too, especially if you caught it upon its theatrical re-release this past year. And if you're one of those people who actually walk the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, then perhaps your experience with The Way was more personal than mine. Be that as it may, collective or solitary, we all walk our own path, in film and in life. Many people choose to make the trek alone. The Way is a very personal journey, Mr. Avery.